Things have changed at Topaz Labs. Today we'll look at what's different and the new pricing plans so you'll know whether to choose photo, gigapixel, or the studio bundle. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Things have changed over at Topaz Labs. Some of you may be happy about the changes, some of you may not like them, but today we're going to take a look at what is new and what is different at Topaz Labs. I'll start with pricing, then show you the new Wonder and Standard Max models in Gigapixel and Photo. We'll finish with Bloom, a web app for creatively upscaling AI art. It's really cool. You don't want to miss that. Here's a quick heads up. Topaz has moved to a subscription. However, if you already own Photo AI and Gigapixel 8, your current licenses remain. You keep those apps. I got to admit, when I heard Topaz Studio, I hoped Studio 2 was back. It's not a replacement, but a new subscription bundle. Still hoping they revive Studio 2 someday. By the way, I've put my Topaz affiliate links below. If you use them, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and it helps support the channel, so thank you very much. Let's take a look at the pricing plans. Now, you can still just get desktop apps, for instance, photo, video, and gigapixel. You can get those as subscriptions. For instance, let's say you just wanted photo. Let me click on this. If I click on pricing, you can see right here, they have two different billing structures, monthly or annual. You do save more for annual. So for monthly, you would pay $21 a month. And that's for the personal plan. And this is what everybody is generally going to get unless you're a pro and your business is doing over a million dollars worth a year. And then they have an annual billing plan, which brings the cost down to $17 a month, which I think makes more sense. Or you could get Topaz Studio, which includes everything that Topaz has to offer. And that's $33 a month annually or $37 a month if you just pay by the month. Now let's look at Topaz Gigapixel, I'll click on it. And now let's click on pricing. For monthly, it's $17 a month. And if you get it yearly, you're going to pay $12 a month, so you'll save. And by the way, note that Topaz Gigapixel and Photo give you unlimited local rendering, unlimited cloud image rendering, the standard models, the new Wonder Cloud model, and the new Standard Max Cloud model, which is really nice because, take Super Focus, for example. On my computer, this can be kind of slow, and I have a fast computer, and if you have a slower, older computer, it could take a long time and most of you will not even use it but now you have cloud rendering and that's all included in your plan so that's really nice and as i said earlier in both photo and gigapixel you have wonder beta and you also have standard max and these are both cloud rendering models these new models require a lot more processing time, so the cloud is the way to go. Now, in Topaz Photo, Standard Max, and the Wonder Model are what is new. Everything else is pretty much the same as the last update for Topaz Photo AI. And the same with Gigapixel. We have the Wonder Model and the Standard Max Model, which are new. But everything else is pretty much the same, unless they've updated any of these models. But all of these generative models, which are really slow, even on fast computers, can all be rendered in the cloud now. So that is new with the subscription. And you don't have to pay for generative credits. Now, I want to say this. If you're someone like me who likes to use Topaz Photo and Topaz Gigapixel, if you bought an annual subscription to each, you would be paying like $29 a month. However, for $33 a month, you could get Topaz Studio, and then you would also get Topaz Video, which is $33 a month, and then the annual billing price is $25 a month. So as you can see, that is a lot of savings, but there's more. Before I move on, I want to say something about Topaz Video. It does require generative credits that you've got to purchase. Now, for the personal plan, you're going to get 25 monthly credits each month. If you get Topaz Studio where you get everything Topaz has to offer, they're going to give you 300 monthly video credits. And you can use those for the video web apps or Topaz Video. With Topaz Studio, you're going to get everything you see right here. Astra, Bloom, which if you're into AI art, and I'll show you this shortly, you're going to love it. 
You're going to get video, photo, gigapixel, enhanced with Express. This is kind of like photo AI up in the cloud. You can resize, you can sharpen, denoise, all that stuff. And coming soon will be this new restoration app called Mosaic. But you're going to get all this unlimited cloud image rendering, unlimited local rendering, monthly video cloud credits, and all the latest apps. So it's really cool. I do highly recommend Topaz Studio. I think it's the best bang for your buck. What you're seeing right now is the cloud app interface. Right now I'm on home. You can see my files are here, the different apps that I have. And if you have Topaz Studio, all of these are available to you. You have Astra. This is a video upscaling app. Think of upscaling like AI generated videos. Bloom for upscaling AI art and adding beautiful detail to art. I'll show you that here shortly. And then you have Unblur, Denoise, Faces, Lighting, Sharpen, Upscale, Video Upscale, and the new Starlight Video Rendering Model, which is really awesome. This is all available to you. Let's say you're away in vacation, you have your laptop, but it doesn't have photo, gigapixel, or video in it. You can still come to the cloud and do any of that kind of stuff right here in the cloud. Now, let's say you're not interested in desktop apps. You can still get all the cloud apps. If I click on cloud apps, you can see you would get Bloom for AI art upscaling, Astra Video upscaling for AI generated images, and you would get all of these Express apps as well. So you don't need Topaz Studio. But if you have Topaz Studio, you're going to get all of these web apps along with all of the desktop apps. Now, here's the pricing for the web apps Express. Monthly, you're going to pay $29 a month, and you're going to get 150 monthly video credits along with that. And if you pay annually, the price drops down to $25. Or again, get Topaz Studio and you get all the desktop apps, all the cloud apps, everything that Topaz has to offer. And now here we are in Photoshop because what I want to do is show you the results I've got from upscaling an image like this. It was a very small image and I upscaled it four times using the standard max model, the wonder model, and I'm comparing it with the standard model in Gigapixel. Now, I could have done this in photo because the Wonder Model and the Standard Max Model are the same, but I did it in Gigapixel. Now, let me go ahead and click on the Standard Model. This is what the Standard Model upscale looks like right here, and it does a really good job. But now let's compare that to the Standard Max Model. I'll click this on now. Look at all that extra detail that has come in here because it's using generative AI to keep the image looking very natural. You might want to pause the video and take a look at the screenshot. It explains what the Standard Max and the Wonder models are actually doing. This is Standard Max. Let's compare it to Standard. Here's the regular Standard model in Gigapixel. Here's Standard Max. Pretty amazing result. I will zoom in and show you close-ups. And here is the Wonder model. It's really good too, but I think for this image, I like the Standard Max model a little bit better. Now let me zoom in. Here's the zoom in. This is the basic Standard model in Gigapixel. Let's compare it to Standard Max. I'll turn it on now. Are you ready? Look at the difference. It's amazing. Again, standard, standard max. Now let me shut this off. Standard and wonder. Still pretty darn amazing. Standard and wonder. And now let me turn on standard max. And now let's compare that to the wonder model. Here's the wonder model. Which do you like better, Standard Max or the Wonder Model? Let me know in the comments section below. Now let's check out a landscape image. So I have this image here. It's a small image that I upscaled four times. Here's the basic Standard Model. Let's compare that to the Standard Max Model, which is right here. Again, the Standard, the Standard Max. I will zoom in. And now let me shut this off. The Standard versus the Wonder Model. Again, the standard and the wonder. And now I'll zoom in. This is the basic standard model. Here is standard max. Again, the standard model, standard max. Now let's look at the wonder model. Here's the standard model and here is the wonder model. Again, the standard and the wonder. And now let's compare the standard max model against the wonder model. Here's the Standard Max model. Here's the Wonder model. Which one do you like better, the Standard Max or the Wonder? Let me know in the comments section below.
And now for a portrait, I upscaled this one four times. Now this is the standard model. And now here's the standard max model, just for comparison. Let me shut this off again. The standard, standard max. Now again, the standard model and the wonder model. The standard model and the wonder model. And now I'll zoom in. Now that I'm zoomed in, we're looking at the standard model. Now let's look at standard max. Here is standard max. Again, the standard model and standard max. Now let's look at the standard model again, and now let's compare it to the wonder model. Here is the wonder model. Again, the standard model and the wonder model. What I'm finding is when you're working on, say, like a portrait, people, things with a blurry background, the wonder model is the go-to model. It does really good. Again, compare it to the standard max model. Here's the standard max model versus the wonder model. From my testing, when you're doing like landscapes and things with a lot of detail, I think the standard max model is really awesome for those kind of things. And when you're doing portraits and blurry backgrounds where you have bokeh and things like that, I think the wonder model is the one to go with. But I'm really excited about these new models. I think they're doing a great job. I'm really impressed. And now let's look at a cloud-based model, and that is the Bloom model. And this image was an image I generated in Adobe Firefly. I know it's a weird-looking image, but wait till you see the details that the Bloom model brings out in this image. It's pretty amazing. If you love to create AI images from, say, like Midjourney or Adobe Firefly or whatever, I think you will really absolutely love the Bloom model in the Topaz Cloud. Now, this image has been upscaled four times using the standard model in Gigapixel. Now we're going to look at Bloom. This first example is using Bloom at just a low creativity. So really look at the image. I'm going to turn this on. This is low creativity, but I'll shut it off. Here's before, here's after, but you see the detail it's brought in. It hasn't changed the image that much, but it brought in a lot more detail. Now we're going to take a look at it using the medium creative setting in Bloom. And this is going to bring out details that weren't actually in there. It's going to reinterpret the image, but it's an AI generated image, but it does it in a beautiful way. Let me turn on medium creativity. See the extra detail and things that are starting to pop out. Again, here's before and here's after. Next, we'll look at high creativity. Right now you're seeing the standard gigapixel upscaling. So the image looks just like it did when it came out of Firefly. Here's high creativity. Isn't that amazing? Look at all the beautiful details and things. It did do a reinterpretation of the image, but in a very good way. I'll shut this off. And now you're seeing the standard upscale from Gigapixel. Now let's look at Bloom with max creativity. It's really going to take a lot of license here. I'll turn this on. So standard and now max creativity. Isn't that amazing? I'll zoom in and we'll look at some of the details. And now we're zoomed in so we can really take a look. Right now we're seeing the standard upscaling from Gigapixel, but now we're going to look at Bloom. But I do want to say this about AI images. When should you use Bloom for AI images versus the standard models in Photo or Gigapixel? Most of the time a standard upscaler in Photo or Gigapixel is all you need. But if the AI image still looks muddy or low detail after a normal upscale, that's where Bloom comes in. It adds believable detail detail and clarity to bring the image to life. Now that we're zoomed in, this is the image right out of Firefly that's been upscaled with the standard model. So nothing has really been changed on it. Now here's Bloom with low creativity. See the difference? Here's before, here's after. Now let's take a look at it with medium creativity. Okay, before and after. Pretty amazing, right? Again, before and after. Look at all these beautiful details that have come out in this image. It's pretty amazing. And now let's take a look at high creativity. Here's high creativity. Look at that. Really impressive, wouldn't you say? I get excited every time I use Bloom, and I use it all the time. I got to tell you that. And now let's look at max creativity. Here is max creativity. Look at these gears and the different things that put a clock here. Here's another clock here. Gauges or whatever. And look at that bird. Look at the detail in that bird. Isn't that amazing? I'm really blown away by Bloom, I got to tell you that. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really wanted to show you what's happening, the changes that are taking place at Topaz Labs. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon, click all so that you receive all notifications. And then the next time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.